Seven, the fancy school. Miss West was reading to my ninth grade English class when a boy from the front office walked in and handed her a note. She glanced at it and then looked straight at me. As she started that toward me, I froze. Miss West handed me the note. Go see Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas was a school counselor. Take your books. You might be gone for a while. What did I do wrong? As I headed down the hall, I started panicking. Someone died. No, no, I prayed. Now that I had somehow gotten into big trouble. Good morning, Sophia, said Mr. Thomas, waving me to the chair in front of his desk. I have some exciting news. A doctor is funding scholarships to send four Mexican-American students from the lower Rio Grande Valley to St. Luke's Episcopal School in Austin. His own kids are there. It's a terrific school. Since you're at the top of your class, I want to recommend you. You still have to go through tests and interviews, but I think you have a great chance. And going to such a school will open many doors for you. He handed me a brochure. On the front was a picture of a beautiful white stone chapel on top of a hill. It was all aglow. The photo must have been taken around Christmas, for the chapel was surrounded by hundreds of lighted luminarios. And another photo showed the inside, decorated with red poinsettias and tiny twinkling lights. What did it mean to go to an Episcopal school? Were the chapel services anything like Catholic Mass? Inside the brochure, I saw that the school buildings were made from the same white stone that they surrounded the chapel in the shape of a rectangle, like a fortress. The playing fields were beautiful and green. Thoughts of running down those fields, kicking a soccer ball, filled my head. No more street soccer. And there was a girls' soccer team too, with crimson uniforms. Wow. The images of the school seemed like a dream. They made me think of the mansions on the other side of town, where the lawyers and doctors lived. When I read that the, all the students there graduated and went to college, I thought of Coach Clark and learning to kick with my head. So what did you think, said Mr. Thomas, breaking my trance. Eh, hey, how far is Austin from here? Oh, about 350 miles. Oh, so far away. But it's a boarding school, so if you get in, you'll be living in a dorm with other students. Silence. But you'll be able to come home for the holidays and for summer. I wanted to play soccer on those beautiful playing fields. I wanted to get better at kicking with my head so I could go to college. I could get a good job and make enough money to buy a nice house for my parents and Lucy. But to go and live at a school without my family? Sophia, do you think that's too far away? Well, my parents, you know, I said, yes, of course. It can be especially hard for the parents having their child go away to school. But it's a terrific school and you have already gotten to the very top of what we can offer here. It would be a good opportunity to change yourself. Silence. So let me suggest this. Go talk this over with your family, show them the brochure, and then come see me again next Wednesday at 10, okay? I talked to Berta first on the porch. Sophia, you're crazy. You're the best at everything here. Why not stay? Graduate as a McAllen valed valedictorian and get a full scholarship to college? Just look at these pictures, Berta said, pun punching the brochure with her finger. These are rich kids, snooty, with parents who went to college and all. You might even flunk out. I know, but... But what? We're 14. We should be planning your quinceañera. And here you are planning your, what, your escape? I'm not trying to escape. Austin is 900 miles away. It's only 350. That's far, Sophia, really far. It's not like you can still live at home and board a bus every morning. I know, Berta. Silence. And what about your papa, mama, and Lucy, and me? Silence. Sophia, tell me something. Why do you really want to go? I just want to see what's out there. But what's wrong with here? Nothing, but the valley is not the whole world. I just want to see what's out there. Do you want to go to the moon too? I mean, and here I was looking forward to planning our quinceañeras. Berta, I don't want a quinceañera. I love it here, but I want 
but what I want is to go see new things. I want to go to college, make money, and buy a nice house for papa and mama, and maybe become a lawyer. A lawyer? Women aren't lawyers, Sophia, and especially not Mexican women. They're wives, mothers, and if they're lucky, teachers or nurses. But you can try marrying a lawyer if you only start dressing better. The porch door flew open and out jumped Lucy. I stuffed the brochure into my shirt pocket. What are you two talking about? Lucy said. Nothing, I said. Berta and I took off. I waited until the sobremesa the, that evening to bring it up with Papa and Mama. Sobremesa was a time, was a right, right after every, everyone had finished eating supper and was relaxing and sipping coffee or hot chocolate around the kitchen table. Papa and Mama took turns presiding over each sobremesa. Papa said it was a scared, sacred time, like Jesus' last supper, and that it was when we reconnected as a family. There were only two rules for a sobremesa. One was that everybody had to take a turn and say something. The other was that you had to pay attention, listen to the person talking, and never, never interrupt. Papa was presiding that evening, and Lucy went first. I knew it wasn't going to be easy keeping the second rule when Lucy glared at me across the table and then turned to run. She went on and on about how I had been talking to Berta out on the porch before supper and about how we were looking at some secret paper. But when she had come out to the porch, I had immediately crumbled it up and stuffed it into my pocket. And when she had asked what I was talking about to Berta, I had said nothing and ran away. Sophia, is that true? Papa said, looking straight at me. I looked down. It was going to be even harder to tell them now. So, tell us about this secret. Papa looked concerned and confused. This is not like you, Sophia. Yeah, tell her to show us the secret paper, Lucy said. Lucy, remember, you can't interrupt, Papa said. I let out a long heavy sigh and then took the crumpled brochure out of my pocket. I laid it on the table and tried to smooth it out. Papa took it and looked at it. Why is this such a big secret? It's just a brochure for some school in Austin, he said. He handed it to Lucy. <clears throat> okay, Sophia, it's now your turn to talk. You know the rules, Papa said. Silence. Yes. And when you talk, I want to hear all about whatever you shared with Berta, but refuse to share with your own little sister, Mama said. I took a deep breath and told them about being summoned by Mr. Thomas, about the scholarship, the school. I showed them the pictures of the chapel, the playing fields, told them how everyone there went to college. But it's in Austin, Mama said. It's a boarding school, Mama, I said. If I win the scholarship, I'll live there in a dorm silence. But I'll come home for the holidays and summer. I was just starting to talk to my comadres about planning your quinceañera, Mama said. I don't want a quinceañera. I don't want to dance around wearing a big city dress. And that's not what a quinceañera is about, Mama said. It's about growing up, about learning to act like a comadre, and about finally learning to use your don to help yourself, your family, your community. You mean you want me to grow up to be a curandera, I said, suddenly remembering that Tia Belia had said years before. Ah, I think it's my turn now, Papa said, scratching his head. Sofia, remember your two bags of Halloween candy years ago? And how I took you to the cemetery? Do you remember what you saw there? People were having a sobremesa of sorts with their visiting dead relatives. Do you remember this? And do you remember what you said on our way home that night? That you wished we lived on the other side of town because they lived in nice warm houses? I nodded. Mija, do you really want to go away to this school, even if it means leaving your home here? I sat looking at the table. I nodded again. Silence. Can you please tell us why? Papa said. I shrugged. Part of me wanted to to go on this new adventure, but I also felt frightened. 
One of the pictures showed the students all dressed up, sitting down for the for formal dinner. I didn't have clothes like that. And there were so many forks and spoons and knives by each plate. It would be like going to another world, the world of rich people. You don't want to go see what's out there on the other side, don't you? I nodded. My mom spoke up. But what about this side, your family, your barrio? Silence. Sofia, Papa said, do you remember what I also told you on the way home that night about family, tradition? And how your mama cured Lucy of Susto by getting all her comadres together and how that was something the rich doctors from the other side couldn't do? I nodded. Your mama and I want you to be happy, to always be happy. And for you to be happy, you need to learn how to be happy. Learning to be a good comadre is at the heart of this. It's, it's now my turn at the sobremesa, mama said. Sofia, your papa is right. So all I can say for now is that we need to have many more sobremesas to discuss this. You also need to go talk to your godmother. And I need to talk to all my friends. But, Sofia, I know this. This is really scary stuff. For us especially. You're still young, and your papa and I don't know very much about this other world. So you need to figure out why you want to go there. I nodded. Mama then looked at Lucy. Papa was looking at Lucy too. Lucy was staring at the brochure. She looked up and at me. I want to go too, she said. I wanted to hold her, somehow missing her already. I knew that living, leaving Lucy would be the hardest and scariest part of all. My parents were grown up and so would always feel connected to me. They knew how to connect even with the dead. But Lucy was still a kid. We had never been parted. The thought of leaving her made me feel so lonely, as lonely as she would be without me. Still, I wanted to go. And it was then that I finally somehow I had no longer I was no longer a child.